You, you gave the example earlier about the mail package that might be too big for the mailbox. Right. Does the, the, the size, the enormity of our dreams matter? Is, is what we're asking for, does it matter or does it basically come down to just self-belief? No matter how, and, and does the universe know the difference? You know, me asking for a Honda Civic, is it the same to the universe as asking for a Bentley or a Ferrari? Is, is there a size on what we could ask for or does it just come down to just plain and simple, do you believe, unwavering belief that, that you'll get it? I believe it comes down to the unwavering belief. You and I talked about Muhammad Ali. You have that poster behind your your um, desk there. And we talked about your having, you know, being in, in his home. And mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali wasn't born rich. Muhammad Ali believed in himself. I have a quote. I, I've never memorized it exactly. I usually have a slide I read off of. But he said, impossible is just, a, it's an opinion. So it's not reality. It's an opinion by small-minded people who would rather believe the rules of the past than the dreams of their future. And he changed impossible. You separate the I am from the possible, put an apostrophe, I'm possible. So I'm possible to do anything I want. Yep. And he said, I am the greatest long before he ever was. And he stepped into that space and he acted as if he were. L let me give you an example of something I've been saying to people. Well, let me just answer your question one more, one more piece first. General Wesley Clark, who was the head of NATO allied forces in Europe for many years. When I was writing my book, The Success Principles, mm -hmm. I, I met with him at a conference and he told me something. He said, Jack, he said, it doesn't take any more effort to dream a big dream than to dream a small dream. You don't have to burn up more brain cells. You don't have to scrunch up your face more. You don't have to burn more calories. You simply put another zero behind it. You know, from Civic to Bentley, from 100,000 to a million. Now, it may take you a number of years to get to the Bentley. I mean, I have some friends who started a multi-level marketing company called Isogenics. It's a weight loss program, uh, you know, and other vitamins and minerals and stuff. Way back, probably in the 90s, you know, and she owns a Bentley. In fact, they have two of them. And did she get that from between 1993 and 2000? No. But does she have two of them now? Yes. Do they have a billion dollar company now? Yes. So sometimes that dream, you know, to become president of the United States, you know, Barack Obama didn't do that overnight, neither did Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton dreamed about it in high school. You know, it took him many, many years before he actually achieved that. My million dollar check took many, many years, but it was always there. It was always there. And so always focus on it. And it's only our ego that puts a deadline on it. You know, that says, okay, million dollars by December 31st. Everyone always says a million by the end of the year. You know, no one ever says $722,000 by March 31st, 2021. We just kind of round it off. But the point is that sometimes you can achieve that, you know, with, with today's social media, with online product launches, there are people who produce a million dollars in one year uh, with a lot of work and a lot of understanding and build up your database and all that. It's possible. And with technology, and you're inventing tech things and apps that people come up with right now, you can make those kind of breakthroughs. However, don't be attached to it. But dream whatever you want to dream. Dream whatever you want to dream. It's like, you know, and it's only limited by our past beliefs about what is possible. You know, I'll give you another story. There's a guy, um, I'll think of his name in a minute, but he's in Australia. And he was 62 years old. And he'd never run in a race. And he wanted to run in a race. And so he, the only race that was available when he wanted to run was this, uh, it was about, I forget how many miles, about 600 and some miles. It was a six and a half day race. And so basically he signs up for it and he gets there and he'd never run in a race before. He's wearing overalls like a farmer. He didn't have like Nike shoes and all the stuff, you know, Reebok running gear and so forth. And they didn't want to let him run. They thought he had to die of a heart attack. But what happened is, he had something, he had a secret he didn't know. And what he didn't know was you're supposed to sleep at night in a multi-day race. And so he ran five and a half days straight without sleeping and broke the record by 12 hours. Whereas wow. everyone else was sleeping six hours a night. He was behind the first three days, but the third or fourth night he passed everybody. There was no one to stop him and tell him to go to sleep. <sighs> and so he broke through a belief that everyone had held forever, like the four minute mile that Roger Bannister broke and the yep. next year 12, 12 people broke it. They thought it was possible. So 
one of the things that's valuable is to read inspirational books and read about people who, you know, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with no arms and no legs, just stumps on their, you know, and to find out about people who climbed out of the ghetto and became successful entrepreneurs, to read about people who became successful athletes, to read about people who became best-selling authors, because if they can do it, you can do it. That's the value of inspiration. You know, inspiration plus tools, which you and I teach, you have to have the tools, you have to have the principles and the strategies and the real life skills. How do you enroll people? How do you work social media? You know, all that stuff you have to learn, but you can do it. So dream as big as you want. And then here's the thing too, belief is just a choice. I can choose to believe right now that I can climb Mount Kilimanjaro. I can choose to believe that. And if I chose to believe that, and visualized it and affirmed it, eventually part of me would start to want to take the actions that would do that. So here's a story that was shared with me recently. You know who John Assaraf is? He was in The Secret? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so he and I were talking the other day and he shared a story with me. I just, I have to share with everybody now since he shared it. Imagine you're sitting in a restaurant and a famous actor like Denzel Washington gets up or Harrison Ford and they walk over to you and they say, I've been looking at you for the last half hour and you look like, and you have all the mannerisms of someone that we need to cast in a movie. We get this part in this movie, and I'd like to cast you. Now, here's the deal. Here's the script. We've been, I've been meeting over here with my producer with a script. And if you'll accept this challenge, I'll give you the script. I'll give you a million dollars up front as a deposit. And we'll give you another four million when, the, when, it, when it's finished shooting. So it's a five million dollar offer. We think you'll win an Oscar because it's an amazing part. We'll hire you the best acting coaches. I'll hire you the best, uh, you know, voice coach. We'll hire you the best researchers so you can research this character to see kind of historically what he would have been thinking and why. And you know, here's the script. Would you take the offer? I would. Yes. And what would you do with that script? Uh, study it and become the best I could be in that part. Exactly. You'd study it and you'd study it and you'd practice it until you became the part. Correct. And this is what you have to do to become the future you that you want. Here's this script of what you want your perfect uh, life to look like. You know, a million dollar income, travel, you've got this podcast, maybe you're on Oprah, you know, whatever. But you've got this image of what that would look like. And you want to write it out in great, great, great detail, my extraordinary life. And then what you do is you close your eyes and you and you have an affirmation, you know, you know I'm happily celebrating whatever it is that you're having. And then what you do is you visualize what you would be seeing out of your eyes if you were playing that part. How would you walk? How would you dress? How would you talk? Would you be more confident? Would you ask more boldly for things? Would you say no to things that were a distraction? Until you became the part, until nobody could tell you apart from the part. And my, my cousin's an actor, and he's he was in a movie you probably didn't see called Patton. It was a, it was a movie about General George Patton during World War II. George C. Scott. George C. Scott, so you know the movie. George C. Scott got so into that role that his wife almost divorced him. Because after the movie, it took him about three months to stop being General Patton who is an egotistical, demanding, commanding, you know, kind of guy. And so he became the part, you know, Daniel Day-Lewis becomes the part. And, and so during a break on a set, they won't leave, they won't leave character, you know, because they don't want to lose that energy that they have. So if you have a future you want, you have to commit to the inner exercise on a daily basis. Just like if you wanted to be Muhammad Ali, you'd have to work out your muscles and your resistance through running and so forth. You have to work out your mind to become the mindset of that person. And then, then eventually, what are the behaviors? What would you do? Well, you'd exercise, you'd read, you'd, you'd uh, meditate, you'd be in the gratitude, you know, all the things you would be and start being that as much as you can, stepping in that role. You act as if. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.